The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it is Friday in the Riv. The last day of a hectic week with yes, all kinds of we things to great talk things about. going on, yeah. Oh, yeah. First off, we're in the safe, according to Paul, the safe city, remember that. Yeah. We had a stabbing. Ye well, yeah, well, Nashua and Manchester Street. Well, he, maybe, right by the bus company. Maybe he's still walking around in a car with his Durfee or something. Maybe. Even that's not safe either. There's exactly. a lot of assaults there. I don't, you know. Look, uh, but from what I've been told what? from the QT, and again, this is QT. Again, uh, uh, allegedly, you know, it's been told. The reason why he says it's a safe city is the only way to draw the developers here. Listen, the developers, look, the developers don't care. They bought the Kool-Aid right. about the rail. That's the right. rail is going to, you know, everybody's coming to Fall River. You know, we talked about it at the, at the other night at the, at the Flint Neighborhood Association. Yes, I was going to talk about that. The fact, the fact that, let's listen, uh, we said it time and time again on this show. Listen, the rail, I predict within three years, will be a homeless encampment. I, I, get, I will bet anybody will have the lowest ridership in the T-system and will be, a, will be a, a constant drain. Nobody's going to spend an hour and a half going to Boston to go to work. Nobody's going to spend an hour and a half going to Boston, stopping at every T station with all the dangers and the breakdowns. That's minimum time getting to Boston. So that's three hours both ways. But you spend that much time driving. Yeah. Well, but at least you're in your own car. Yeah, but the thing is you can drive up to the Braintree T and cut off exactly. uh, like 45 minutes of that ride exactly. In, exactly. in 30 minutes. Right. So, but, and look. Anybody that can live in Boston can live anywhere in a state because Boston is the most expensive place in New England to live in. So they're not going to come to a place that's number one in crime. As we've said time and time again, the two things that affluent people look at when they relocate are the educational system, and we know that Fall River could not crack the top 200, which is like three-quarters of the way down the pile in the 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts. Uh, and we're number one in crime. Paul can say anything he wants, and he can say that they're making it up, they're lying. Well, it's not only that particular thing. We were in the top 50 by another organization a few years ago. We, you know, no matter where it is in the United States, they went through the United States, and we were in the top 50. We're in the, the United States. <laughs> and, yeah, we were in the top ten. I, did, I didn't want to really do it. See, then I'll say we're being negative again. There you go, CJ. We're being negative. No, all we're doing is stating facts. The f and, you know, the, the reality is that, listen, um, developers are going to come here anyway. They're already here. They're driving it up because developers don't care. Therein lies the problem. That's what we talked about at the meeting. Developers don't care. They come in, they think they're going to make a fast buck, they drive up the rent, they drive up property taxes beyond the reach of low-income and fixed-income people who own homes. And then if they get a loss, what do they do? They pack up their tent and leave. Or they, because, listen, this isn't the first time. You know what the definition of insanity is, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Didn't we do this, like, uh, what was that, 20 years ago, Point Gloria? Yeah. Point Gloria, that was the first gentrification attempt. What happened? I know the guy, actually, I was on a board, uh, the Florida Regional Task Force, with a guy who bought the penthouse, penthouse apartment at Point Gloria. And a couple of years after he bought it, boy, was he sorry. Because did he, did he take a bath getting rid of that? Yep. And look, buildings and developers, see, this is the con that the, the politicians run on you. This is the panacea. First, we had Battleship Cove is going to save Fall River. They're all these tourists are going to flock in. Then 
the carousel, then the HMS bounty, then something else. And we got it. Now it's market rate housing is going to be the savior. Market rate housing is going to save anything. Developers don't care. They come in, they, they take a loss, and they leave. That's what they do. Like politicians. They, they, they come here, they get elected, then they go to Westport, try to get elected. They don't get elected, they come back to Fall River and get elected again. Or they retire, they go to Somerset, then they come back, and they run for office, and then when they're out of office again, they'll be gone again. Uh, some of us stay here. And as I said, you can disagree with anything we say, but you can't say we don't have a commitment to the city. I never lived anywhere else in my life except when I was in the military. I, live, I have lived in the Flint area my entire life. So uh, you can't question the commitment to the city. We've been here, and, we're, and we are staying here trying to change the thing. But that's the problem. Developers, developers, developers. They're going to save every. They haven't saved anything. We've had developers for 50 years in this city. Yeah, we've had local developers. We've had out-of-town developers. The only difference is the out-of-town developers, they just pick up their tent and, and leave and write it off. They take the, the, the profits or the losses. Stick it in their carpet bag. That's it. And if they get a loss, they write it off that's on their it. taxes. That's it. And, you know, I, I don't, you know, it came up today on, and I spoke about it briefly yep. when we opened, about the stabbing yep. and the mayor saying this is a safe city. Um, the host of that show turned around and said, well, what do you expect the mayor to do? Go out there and stop the stabbings? Go out there and stop the bike riding? Uh, no, but at least speak honestly about it. It's not a safe city. If there's a stabbing every day and a shooting every day and guns being picked up, it's not a safe city. So don't say it's a safe city. Well, but for you to say it's a safe city just so you can bring developers here yeah. is disingenuous, not only to the developers, but to the people of Fall River. And not only that, to that, to that bought and paid for political tick talk show host, I do expect the mayor to stop this. Mm -hmm. I don't expect them to go out and do the policing. We have problems in the police department. What has happened? Nothing. We don't know. Everything's a mystery. Everything's a mystery like how much we're going to pay for Durfee. And, how, you know, it, because they won't put it in the budget. But I'll get to that later, too, because that's one that's really sticking in my craw. But, see, this is the problem. What do you expect the mayor to do? I expect the mayor to make this a better city. The mayor has been in education his entire life. He was an educator for decades. He was a school committeeman. Now he's the mayor. We just built a $293 million building, which at every meeting we told people, one, we made one statement, you and I, buildings do not educate people. That's right. Do not educate students. Good teachers educate students. Money directed at the students educates students. And we've proved it. We got a brand new $293 million. 63 million. 263? 293 is diamond. Oh, diamond. I'm sorry. Yeah. About, you know, what, what's 30, <laughs> what's 30 million? What's 30 million between <laughs> friends? I mean, when we're throwing away the taxpayers' money, yeah, it's, it's irrelevant. Yeah. I, I apologize, okay? I don't want you being called Two, yeah, a liar. Though. Yeah, well, look, all right, 263 million or whatever. You know, after 250. After after a quarter of a billion, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. Until you get to a half a billion. That's right. You know, I mean, <laughs> everything in between is irrelevant. But but the thing is that uh, we got a brand new building, and we couldn't crack the top 200. We have been a failing school system for a very, very long time. How many schools have we had taken over by the state? How many yep. put on probation by the state? So here's an individual who's been involved in, in, in a very narrow aspect in his community and was fundamentally unsuccessful for 30 years. So what's being done? I'll tell you what's being done. 60 new jobs, uh, pay raises for everybody. That's what's getting done. There's no performance-based evaluations because keep putting on because I'm going to tell you, deans of students don't educate students. 
Assistant principals don't educate students. This is what they do. Now we're going to do it on the city side. They're going to come over to reorganize it in the image of the school department. Oh, heaven help us. Exactly. We're going to, re we're going to reorganize the city in the image of the only department he ever had any intimate knowledge of, and that's the school department. And that place is a money pit. It's it the is biggest boondoggle go. It is a statutorily required money pit. You have to give them the money, no matter how ridiculous they're spending it. Right. And that's the problem. So now we're going to do the same thing to the city. Guess what? It's, it's a crock. It's all a crock. Yeah, well, Kevin Aguiar just came out like with a said, statement. Like I said, tell the truth. Tell the truth. That's right. Kevin Aguiar just came out with a statement. Really? Which I thought was very interesting. Uh, he, he ostracized all of his colleagues on the school committee, including the mayor. Really? He says, we have a $263 million building. And we still need more money for the athletic field and the athletic house. And we never included that in the budget. It's time for the school department to take on that budget and not pass it off to the city. Well, imagine that. Here, here, Kevin. Yeah. Very you, good. You, very good. Uh, the taxpayers thank you, Kevin. Yep. And you know what? Uh, somebody brought up to me the fact that, and they said, you probably won't want to hear this, CJ, but what do you think about Kevin Aguiar running for mayor? I said, I'd be 100% behind him. I'd be 100% behind him. What? Listen, we've been on almost 10 years. Right. We don't mind hearing anything. That's right. You know, we've told you. We don't care. It doesn't bother me. I have my opinion. You have your opinion. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. People, people, the, 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 the other side, you, you can't have an opinion. Right. Like this morning, what was on the news? Mm -hmm. they're, they're attacking Alito's house. He's getting death threats by these lunatics, and the President of the United States called MAGA people the most dangerous threat in the history of the United States. I haven't seen any MAGA people. I've seen them go to school committee meetings and yell about, uh, you know, curriculum, which is their right as a mm -hmm. parent. But it's the, it's, it's the wokies that are there screaming and yelling, making death threats. And the thing is, they're all imbeciles. Did they read Alito's opinion? They're not eliminating abortion. No. They're going back to the, what the Constitution says, that each state has to legislate it. And right now, half, I can bet you that 90% of the people making those death threats, those, those lunatics, those are the terrorists. Yeah. Terrorizing people. Every one of them comes from a state where abortion will be legal. Probably. Because they're all from blue states. Yeah. There's nobody from red states mm -hmm. over there. Right. And, the, you yeah. know, the thing is, is that Massachusetts and Rhode Island already codified abortion. Now you have the Senate trying to codify abortion in the federal law. They don't think it's going to pass because they don't think they have the 60 votes. But this isn't a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just a thing. It, it's just a thing. It's it's what it, the it's what, it's what the, the Constitution, Constitution said. States have this is the That's United right. States of America, and our forefathers were extremely sensitive of the fact that if you try to federalize this country, we are going to have another civil war. Right. This is a, this is a federation of states, so they they maintain states' rights. The federal government has its place, and that's what these nitwits don't understand. Apparently, they fell asleep during civics class, although they don't give civics anymore. No, they don't. But the reality is that they don't read opinions. He didn't say they're banning abortion. No. He just said that each, each, and he, actually, he's doing it the fair way. Mm -hmm. See, they, but not fair in their mind. Right. Because their mind is, if you don't agree with me, we're going to kill you. We're going to be, a, we're going to, we're going to terrorize you. You don't have a right to an opinion. All Alito said was, I'm going to give it to the people to decide right so you can decide if you want if you're in favor if you're pro-choice you can move to a state that's that's pro-choice and vote for it right because each individual state will vote what the majority of the people in that state want right that is what the constitution provided for but they've they have completely warped the narrative you know, everybody's screaming and yelling that that they were, that he's eliminating it, and he's getting death threats. That is absurd. Death threats. He he had to cancel a function because these 
This country is, and, and the, yet the great, the, the great uniter in his acceptance speech for president said, we're going to unite everybody. We need unity, 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 unity. And he's done nothing but divide this country based on racial and, and political lines since the day he got into office. Who else said something along that line when, <laughs> they, when they became uh, uh, the elected official and they were giving their acceptance speech? Oh, there's been a few. Oh, no, one recently. Sitting, in, sitting on the sixth floor now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But we, I, we've got see, I, I go back, I go back to, uh, to back to one of, the, one of the favorites that they're all behaving like because mm -hmm. they call everybody else Nazis. Hitler. Yep. What did Hitler run on? I'm going to unite Germany exactly. and, and resurrect the, in, the, the economy of Germany. As soon as you hear that they're going to unite and resurrect the economy, run. <laughs> so run like so Alito out. is under attack. And yep. you know the only good thing I heard this morning about that was Coons is getting together with a Republican to actually attempt to get legislation to, pr to make this illegal for these people to go to people's homes. Mm -hmm. But Biden supported giving their home addresses. Yep. So what the, what the MAGA people should do is all wa wander around his in Maryland and everywhere he goes. Because I'm going to tell you, I am absolutely adamantly opposed to that. When we had, when, when I ran a union for a long, long time, we were, we had a, and you all remember, we picketed more than one mayor, but we had a real dispute with Ed Lambert. And we were picketing him at every political event. And I had an individual in the union stand up in a, during a meeting and say, "We're gonna let's go picket his house." And I told him, "Absolutely not. We will not picket his house. We will not picket him when he was with his family. His family has nothing to do with this issue. His wife and his children have nothing to do with this. This is about him." And about our position on a collective bargaining agreement, and it's a political issue. If he's going to a political function, if he's going there as the mayor, we will picket him. And we even picketed him at BCC. And it's fair. And it, but these people, the president of the United States supporting giving the addresses so the people can be terrorized and then in the next breath calling MAGA people terrorists. Well, you know, it's interesting. That's, that's disgraceful. If you, it's interesting because if you remember, um, about two decades ago, um, they issued orders and made it the law, codified it, that you cannot pick it directly in front of a Planned Parenthood yeah. or abortion clinic. You have to be across the street. You can't get within so many feet of people. You, you know, they, they laid it right out. But it was okay to do that. Yeah. Okay? But it's not okay to protect Alito or other elected officials or appointed officials. I think it's, a point, I think it's yeah. fair to say that what they do in their job should not reflect on what their family does. Yeah. But, but, you know, unless, you, unless, of course, their family wants it to reflect on them, and then I still well, think yeah, it's off limits. You, you know, I do, too. But to get back to your point, you see, this is exactly it parallels things because it shows your original point about Paul being truthful. Mm -hmm. You know, don't try to con people. The developers are going to come here anyway because they That's don't right. even listen to you. They're looking at the, 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 the hype about the commuter rail going to you know, gonna make South East and Mass. But market rate housing, people are going to go to Somerset. They can live anywhere. That's BS. But as you said, tell the truth. It's the same thing with this issue. Why doesn't, why doesn't the left tell the truth about the decision? Right. They've created this to gin up their base to get there in the midterms. They're t they're, you know, everybody, all the nitwits that don't bother, they just listen to, to you know, MSDC and, uh, and, uh, and the rest of the, the, the propaganda arms, all, of, all the Yosef Gerbel stations, and they say... Oh, they're getting rid of abortion. I, you know, you know, keep your hands off my body. It's my body. It's my choice. Unless you want to stick a needle in my arm, but then that's okay for the government. See, that's their double standard. 
You can't, and that's the problem. Why don't they tell the truth about the decision? Why doesn't, why doesn't Biden say, who's supposed to be a Catholic, by the way. I know. <laughs> which is laughable. Which I've. Which, which, which is, which is, la- he should have been excommunicated when he right, visited he the Pope. Been. He should have been excommunicated. By, but, by canon law. That's by right. By canon law. Exactly. But what gets me is. He he said this is a terrible decision. He's against, so he's pro. He's pro life. Now he used to be pro. He used to be pro life. Now he's pro choice. Of mm-hmm. course, uh, I mean, if it's he even politically has, expedient. If, he, if he even has the, the mental faculties to know what he's pro, besides you know, uh, pro. But it's ice politically cream. expedient. But the yeah. But the fact is that for him to get on there and and basically give out the addresses of these people to be terrorized and then in the next breath call people terrorists. I mean, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. And these people, are they're crazy. They are. They're crazy. They think they can get away with anything. It's like, okay, Antifa can kill people, get away with it. But if, they, if you loiter in the Capitol, they throw you in jail without a trial for two years. There's, you know, this country is on, a, uh, is on a precipice of some really, really, really you know, you're going to see a lot of backlash in, in these midterms, and you're going to see a lot of backlash over there because the country's in shambles. I mean, the, and and the the irony is they always talk about democracy. This is not democracy is not only having one opinion. That's 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 uh, goose stepping. That's mm-hmm. fascism. Yeah, you know, that's tyranny. You can't. The the only opinion can't be yours. That's what America was based on. You can have an opinion no matter how ridiculous it is. Right. So, but we hide everything. We misrepresent everything. Now, let's get to the next misrepresentation. I had a conversation last night with a, the with a city councilor. We went over the sample ballot for the Durfee High School, which said it was for the bond for, mm-hmm. to pay for Durfee. So that's right. a, that's a, that is a specified amount. Right. So it's, it's a fixed figure. There's no latitude. Whatever it costs for that facility, we're on the hook for it. Okay. And then it talked about the amount based on the assessed value at the time. Now, everybody, he's refusing to actually come out with a number, which I believe, and I want to get this in, because if I am going to call, I am going to call my state representative, so she will be waiting for my call, and she knows, and I'm going to ask her uh, how many agencies I have to complain to because the city of Fall River is our fiduciary. We own the city of Fall River. We are the shareholders, the taxpayers and renters who contribute through their rent are shareholders in the city of Fall River. As a fiduciary, they are responsible to answer to us and to use our money wisely. I think it is illegal for them not to tell us I, I am going to send a letter to the council after I file my complaint saying that I not only want the amount, I want a quarterly report when we have a budget report on exactly how much money was, was put toward the Durfee debt and what the outstanding balance is. Because I'm a taxpayer and I want to know. I'm paying for that building and I want to know because I do, I'm supposed to know. And the, the, the reality is... The other problem, you know what's puzzling? This is, it's, it's, it's a, it's just so puzzling to me. It's and a I conundrum. know, I, uh, you know, it's more than that. It's like a paradoxical conundrum, mm. which is even like, that's like a conundrum squared. <laughs> but you know what? We know that Paul's not good with numbers by his own admission. And I'm pretty good with numbers. Mm-hmm. So let me run this one by you, CJ. You got a mortgage. That's what we got on the dur- on Durfee. A mortgage. Mm-hmm. A mortgage. Fixed. You know how much you pay, you owe. Right. You know the interest. Okay. You, you know what you owe. Yeah. You call up and you go, e, you know, I want to get out of, you know, what do they tell you? You pay this mortgage. You pay an extra payment every couple of months. You pay this mortgage up and save a whole ton of money. And it'll be shorter because it'll be paid off sooner, mm-hmm. right? So they don't want to tell us. Why? What are they going to do with the money? They're going to rob the money again? They're going to skim money? I want a report because I don't trust them. I'll say it right on the air. I don't trust you. I didn't trust you with health care. 
I don't trust you with this money. You don't want to show me the numbers? I'm going to go to court. I'm going to file a ta 10 taxpayer suit if I have to, and I think CJ will be the second signee. And we will get eight other people, I guarantee it. Because let's look at that scenario. When they did that study and they came up with the, Jaisal said between 90, but maybe up to 115, 120, yep. based on a house assessed at 221,000 or right. something like that. And if you had, if it was a $300,000 house, it would be 165 or something right. like that. Now, everybody's going to be doubled, mm -hmm. right? So if we're doubling the payment. Should be paid off early. It should be paid off early. That's right. Right? That's why I want to know the numbers. Because it should be, there's only two, to me, mathematically, there's only two ways out of this scenario. We keep the 115 that was, that was proposed when it, we were voting on and pay it through the term that we said it was going to be paid. Or if you're going to assess us on all our new values because you think you're tucking it to us, you're not tucking it to us. I better be, be, be certain that we're going to pay that off a hell of a lot sooner. Because if I'm paying twice as much as I would have been paying when that vote went in, I expect this debt to be paid twice as fast. No, but I mean, does that make mathematical sense? That's to you? perfect mathematical sense. But here's the thing. I want to remind you of something. A city councilor at the last city council meeting moved to get rid of the quarterly reports. I wonder why. Yeah. Could this be the reason? Yeah. Could this be the reason? Of I'm not saying that it was, but could it be the reason? You know, people have a question to ask that. And the reason that was given at the city council meeting was that it's too much work for the people in the departments. Oh, to, for the, for, to do the work that they're paid to do. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I, I'm not, I, I got that straight. Yeah, as long as you and, know. You know and, and if look, if that counselor wants to, wants to say, I don't care about the budget, and I don't care how bad they screw us, we don't want a quarterly report, even though we're going to give this idiot a pay raise, because, you know, and, but we don't want to give him too much work, heaven forbid. But the fact is, I want a quarterly report on this debt. This, this is an override. Mm -hmm. And I want I want to know how much we're paying because just like the Malone issue, just like the police department, just like everything in this city, since Paul Cougar has been the mayor, nothing has ever seen a light of day to inform the public. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe we're on strong footing. You, it's our money. You are our fiduciary. We should be able to know those numbers. You work for us. We are the stockholders. You are our representatives, and you are answerable to us. And when you give me a debt override, I want to be damn sure you're spending every, money, every penny of that money where it belongs. And you take that for what it's worth. Because I'll say right on the air, we have caught you with your finger in a cookie jar. I have personally caught you with your hand in a cookie jar more than once. Hey, there's no argument. You know, I mean, I've, I've listened to the arguments on both sides of the fence. Um, I've listened to it when Mary Sahadi was in place. I'm going to listen to it with this new person. And I want to see where the truth is going to come from. Because guess what? The people want the truth. And we already know that Paul doesn't say the truth because he's saying it's a safe city. It's a safe city. Well, that's not a truth. That's not a fact. And if it was a fact, we wouldn't be number one in crime. Okay? We and we wouldn't be number one in violent crime. So we're not a safe city. And until that is, is driven home, that the people want to hear the truth, we're never going to hear the truth. We elect our politicians to tell the truth. The problem is, how do you know a politician's lying? Their, Their lips, lips are, are moving. moving. That's the truth. Hey, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to wish you a good weekend. It's going to be raining, so be careful. Happy Mother's Day out there. And remember... Stay safe, stay angry, and hold your politicians accountable. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Monday.